Okay, so today we will start chapter four. Uh, we will start off with simple interest. So this chapter you have simple interest, compound interest and borrowing money. So today we'll separate them into three and we will start with simple interest. Okay, let's look at the learning outcome by the end of this chapter. For both simple interest and compound interest, you need to be able to determine the interest amount and future value. You need to be able to differentiate between exact and ordinary simple interest. Uh, the last part will be compound interest, which we will do in the next class. Okay, so what is interest? Interest is money paid uh, regularly at a particular rate for the use of money lent. Meaning if you borrow money, you need to pay, pay a rate and that rate is called interest. Okay, it's never free to borrow money. It, is, it will cost money. Okay, like you take a loan from the bank, you need to pay interest. For an example, Alex wants to borrow 1,000. The local bank says 10% interest. So to borrow the 1,000 for one year will cost 1,000 times 10%, which is 100. So what is 100? The interest. What is 10%? The interest rate. So the percentage is called the rate and the value that you pay is called the interest amount. All right. What is the 1,000? The 1,000 that he borrowed is called principal. All right. It is called principal, which we will go through again after this. Alex borrowed 1,000, but he has to pay back 1,100. That is correct. Of course, you have to pay back the 1,000 that you have borrowed and the 100 that is for interest. So altogether, he will pay back 1,100. That is what you call future value. All right, so let's look at this. Alex is borrowing the money, so Alex is the borrower. The bank is giving Alex the money, lending Alex the money. The bank is the lender. The person who gives the money is a lender. Principal is the amount of money that you borrow, the loan, the original amount. Interest rate, when you see rate, you know it is percentage. Interest amount is the total interest that you pay. All right. So year zero is the birth of the loan, meaning the time that you take the loan. That is year zero. The first year starts right after year zero. Okay, why do you actually borrow money? You probably need it for business. Some people make money out of money. So that sort of thing. You borrow 1,000 to start a chicken business. A year, a year later, you sell the grown chickens for 1,200. You pay the bank back 1,100. This is back, basically, we're talking about the same scenario where you borrow 1,000 and your interest is 10%. So you see, you have made a profit of 100 there. Okay? So there are always different scenarios to it. Now in this case, he sold the chicken for 1,200, so he made, a, he made money out of it. Okay? So this is what we're going to look at today, simple interest. Simple interest is, is simple because every year the interest will not, will not change. If the first year is 100, the second year also 100. After three years, 300. After four years, 400. After five years, 500. Yeah, that is how simple interest works. You pay the same amount of interest every year. It doesn't change, okay? So well, let's look at this example. If Alex borrowed 1000 for five years at an interest rate of 10%, how much must Alex pay back after five years? So your interest will be 1000 times 10% times five. That's 500. The principal is 1000, right? So how much does he pay back at the end of the term? 1500. So the formula that we are using here for simple interest is I equals to PRT. What's I equals to PRT? Interest, the amount of interest, equal to principal, the amount that you borrow, times rate, the annual interest rate. Your interest rate given to you in the question is always for one year. Annual means yearly. All right, and T is time. At all the time, the time will be in terms of years. Why? Because the interest rate is in terms of years. So the time will also be in terms of years. So let's look at this. We're going to use the formula that we have just discussed. I equals to PRT. Don't worry, this formula is given to you in your exams. Jan borrowed 3,000. So what is this 3,000? Principal. Times 5% times 4. Okay, so how much interest? 600. So that's I equals to PRT for you. Example two, find the simple interest on 750. What's 750? Principal. 4%, 
times half a year. What is the simple interest amount and what is the final payable amount? So I've left it uh, empty for you because I would want you to calculate this on your own. All right. So find the simple interest. How do you find it? 750 times 4% times half a year. Okay. You need to times half a year. Why? Because this interest is for one year. Understand? So times half a year, you will get the amount. So what's the final payable amount? You take the principal plus interest, 750 plus the interest. I've left it empty because I would like you to calculate it yourself. Determine the interest paid on 4,000 invested at 5% per annum simple interest for two years. So interest paid, now you want to find how much interest. 4,000 invested, how much you invest is always your principal times rate. Can you see the 5%? I put it here at 0 0.05 times two years. Okay, so you should be able to find the interest. How long should 2,000 be invested? What you want to invest is principal. Do you see that? P equals to 2,000. Interest rate, 10%. Hey, can you see I filled it up there? R equals to 10%. For it to grow to 4,000. So if you want it to grow to 4,000, what is 4,000? Your future value. That means the value at the end is 4,000. So if I take 4,000 minus 2,000, meaning I take the value at the end, minus my principal, I will get the interest amount, which is 2,000. So then I can put it into the formula. I equals to PRT. 2,000 equals to principal, which is 2,000, times 0 0.1, which is your interest rate, times time. You don't know what's time. So you can solve it now to find time. All right? For it to grow to, that means that's your final amount. The 4,000 is your future value. What is future value? Principal plus interest, the final amount. All right? Okay, there are two types of simple interest. One is exact and one is ordinary. Okay, most banks use ordinary interest rate. Exact interest is based on the number of years exactly in a year. That is what it means simply. So there are exactly 365 days per year. And for leap year, it's 366. So see exact interest it is exactly that many days ordinary interest is 360 days ordinary interest is what most financial institutions use all right so let's look at an example here so if you look at this table which is also in your manual a bank loans a business money at 8% interest for 90 days 8% is your rate 90 days is your time if the amount of interest was 4,000 if your I is 4,000, use the ordinary. When you see ordinary, what does that tell you? I'm talking about 360 days. So if you look at the formula, I equals to PRT. What do you want to find? Principal, right? So P is equal to I over RT. Can you see that? It's extracted from the I equals to PRT formula. P is equal to I over RT. So what is I? 4,000 from the question. Divide by rate of interest, 8%. Do you see 0 0.08 there? Times 90 over 360. Why over 360? Because my interest rate is always for one year. So this is ordinary interest and there's days there. That's why I take 90 days divided by 360. All right, because if you just times it with 90, you are saying 90 years. So this is days, you divide by 360. If they say exact, you divide by 365. This is ordinary, you divide by 360 you will get 200,000 for your principal. Now you want to find rate, all right? What is the rate of interest? Meaning you want to find R. So from your formula of I equals to PRT, how to find R? When you move it around, you will see R is equal to I over PT. On a loan of 5,000, 5,000 is your principal. 125 days is your time. Interest is 166 using ordinary. Ordinary interest means it is out of 360. So R equals to I over PT. I is 166, right? According to the question, divide with 5,000, which is your principal, times 125 over 360. Whatever value you get, you must times with 100 because you want to find percentage. If you plug this formula inside the calculator, you will get 0 0.0956. That is because it's decimals, but because you're finding rate, you need to times 100%, and because percentage, it has to be in two decimal places, 9.56%.
What would be the time period? Now you want to find time, which means you want to find T. So if you move the formula around, the I equals to PRT formula, T is equals to I over PR. So what is your I from the question? The interest is 290. Divide with principal, which is 7,600 times 0 0.11, which is your interest rate. Okay, whenever you put it into the formula, it's best to change it into decimals or either you have to use the percentage sign in your calculators. So when you put this in the calculator, you won't get 124.8. You can try, you won't get. Why you won't get? Because now you want to find time. They will give you a decimal place. So because it's ordinary, in, ordinary interest, you will multiply it with 360. Okay, if it's exact, you multiply with 365. Because this is in terms of days, that's why you have to change it, all right? Okay, so let's look at higher purchase loans. James bought a car for this much. OTR is on the road. That means that is the final price of the car. He borrowed 83,000. So whenever you see he borrowed 83,000, that is your principal. Six years is your time. Your interest rate is 1.88%. Okay, what is the down payment amount? Down payment is a deposit. How to find deposit? You take the price of the car minus how much he borrowed. That will be the deposit that he pays, which is 6690. Interest payable. You're going, whenever you're doing a higher purchase loan, it's always simple interest. You're buying a car, you're buying a house, you're buying anything, it's simple interest. Okay? So you'll use a simple interest formula, which is I equals to PRT. So I is equal to P. What's your principal? 83,000. What is the rate of interest? 1.88%, in other words, 0 0.0188, times with 6. Why do I times with 6? The time is 6 years. Okay, so you'll get the total interest payable. Total amount payable, in other words, is future value. What is your future value? How much do you pay back? Your principal plus interest. So what is my principal? 83,000. What is my interest? 9362.4. You add it up, that is the total amount payable. Monthly repayment to the nearest 10 cents. So now monthly repayment. Now that's my amount I have to pay, right, in total for six years. Six years for how many months? Six times 12, right? So you just divide it by 72, you will get 1282.81. So that's your final monthly payment. You always divide with the total number of months. But in this case, they've asked you to round it off to the nearest 10 cents. So nearest 10 cents will be 1282.80, all right? Now they asked you final monthly payment. Why am I saying that? Okay, because you are paying one cent less every month. Do you see that? You're paying to the nearest 10 cents. So there's one cent less every month, okay? So let's look at how we're going to calculate this. So we find the total amount first. How much did you have to pay from part three? 9236.40, all right? You minus off what you have paid for 71 months. Okay, 71 months, you paid 1282.80, meaning to the nearest 10 cents. Okay, so you, how much you have to pay back altogether, you minus with what you have paid for 71 months. That balance will actually be the last month's payment. Understand? Why is it a little different? Why is the final monthly payment different? Because every month you're paying to the nearest 10 cents. You are paying one cent less. So how to find what is the balance that you need to pay right at the end? You take how much you have to pay back, the total amount payable from part three. You minus with how much you have paid for 71 months. That will be the 72nd month payment. 72nd meaning the last final monthly payment. All right, why 72 months? Because we're borrowing it for six years. Okay. Moving on, uh, we are going to do 4.1. So 4.1, the first part of the question, actually, I, I will leave you to do it on your own because it's pretty simple. I will just go through question 15 till the end, all right? So whenever you read question on interest, there are only three things that I need you to highlight, which I've helped you to highlight already. Uh, these questions from your manual, okay? 75,000 in this question is your principal. They can borrow the money for four years, that is your time and 9% ordinary simple interest. When you see years, it doesn't matter whether it's ordinary or it's exact, you just times it with four, not a problem. So that will be the interest and the amount payable. Amount that you see there is the future value, okay?
So com compute the total amount that Tony and Helen will owe their relatives. That is the final amount, which is 102,000. So the same thing I've done for questions 16 and 17. I've helped you to highlight what is important. The question is really long, but you only need three things. Your principal. So question 16, the principal is 3,600. Six months. In other words, I can multiply it with half or I can multiply it with 6 over 12. It means the same thing. Always change it in terms of years, all right? Because your interest is in terms of years. Your question in here, the interest, it doesn't mean you're saying, oh, 9% is, the 9% is every year. That's why you times with 4. Six months, you want to borrow, but the 5% is for one year. Understand? So 3,600 times 6 over 12 times 5%, you'll get an interest of 90. How much you have to pay back? 3690. Question 17, same here. I've highlighted it for you. 80,000 is your, how much you want to borrow? Your principal. Times with 135 days. Now, this is a little different. This is in days. Okay, times 6.5%. So now this is ordinary interest. It is based on 360 days. So 80,000 times 135 over 360 times 6.5%. You will get the interest to find the total amount payable. When you see repay, that is the total amount payable. Okay, so you just add up your principal and interest and you will get your answer. Same goes to question 18 to 21 actually, along with her husband. He wants to finance 60,000 is your principal, eight months. You can put it as eight over 12 to change it into years. 5.2% ordinary simple interest, you can find your interest. Repay is the total amount payable, which is 62,080. Question 19, your principal is 400,000, 200 days at 5.5% exact simple interest. I've helped you to highlight this. Exact interest is 365 days. So you take your principal times time, which is 200 over 365 times 5.5%, you will get your interest. Repay would be the amount total, which is 412054.79. Whenever you see repay, it's always future value, the final amount, principal plus interest. Understand? Question 20, 45,000, 6.25%, exact simple interest, 120 days. So 45,000 times 120 over 365. Why 365? Because it is exact times the interest rate, you will get the answer. Same goes to question 21. It is quite direct, all right? Next one, Bill and Carol Campbell need to purchase two new saws. The company sells them, so you want to, your principal is 5,000, 45 days, 11% exact interest. So you use the same method. 5,000 times 11% times 45 over 365, you will get the answer. All right, she borrowed 50,000 at 6.7% simple interest, exact simple interest, 219 days. So I've highlighted all the important parts. So 50,000 times 6.7% times 219 over 365, you will get your interest, which is 2010. Total amount payable, you add it up, you'll get 52,010. So I think it is so far, it's quite okay. All right, this is the solution for exercise 7.1. If you are all right, you want to skip the video, you can just straight away skip to the last part. So that is about it for simple interest. Uh, we will end our class here. Okay, so I would like you to finish uh, exercise 4.1 actually. If you, once you're done with that and we are pretty much done. In the next class, I will give you some extra questions on simple interest. And uh, we will actually move on to compound interest thereafter. All right.